Hi guys, so this is um, uh, the conclusion to our section 3.3 lesson. Uh, example 3 and 4, I'll do those real quickly and uh, hopefully you can understand what's going on here. Okay, so uh, example 3 says find the indicated function compositions and then find the domain of each composition. So function f is function f is 2x to the 1 fourth and function g is 2x plus 7. Okay, and so the first composition they're asking us to do is f of g of x. So f of g of x. And what I suggested you to do in class makes this fairly simple is just to say take function f. So the outside here is function f, right? And we're supposed to substitute g in there. So I take function f, uh, which is this, and I write it down. So I write 2, but instead of the x, because function g is supposed to go in here for x, so instead of the x, you just leave a big empty space and then write the fourth power like this. Okay, so I wrote f down without the x inside. Okay, I just omitted this and left a big space there because what we're going to substitute instead of x is g. Okay. And so you go here and you just say, what is g? This is g of x. And so this is plug g of x into the function f of x right here. So I just take this and plug it in. So you get 2x plus 7. All right. And then we just want to simplify this. So <clears throat> the composition will be uh, 2 times, but you can't distribute the 2 in here because it has a power 1 fourth. So because of the 1 fourth power, I can't distribute in uh, the 2. I just leave the 2 on the outside. But then also it's easier to write this as a radical. It's always easier to write uh, fractional exponents as radical expressions so that you actually understand what is it that you're looking at. 2x plus 7. All right. I mean, the composition part is that simple. You're done. Now, the question is state the domain of each composition. Okay, so for this composition, I need to state the domain. Uh, last class, we looked at if I'm using, uh, if I'm considering a function that has an odd root like cube root of x or <clears throat> fifth root of something, uh, 2x plus 1 or something. Um, what can the, the allowable numbers or the numbers that are in the domain of those functions, whenever there's an odd root, those uh, um, domains of functions that have odd roots are all real numbers. Anything is okay. I can plug in <clears throat> negative numbers in here. I can plug in the number zero. I can plug in positive numbers. Nothing is a real problem for an odd root. But even roots are not like that. So we know that the square root of, let's say, negative 4, we learn in chapter 2 that this becomes, um, the negative gets pulled out as an i, and then I have root 4, and then we call that 2i. But this is imaginary. <clears throat> so when we're talking about domain and range, or at least in this chapter, domain of um, these power functions, we're talking about what x values uh, are in the domain of the function or what x values can the function take on or can be substituted into the function if you want to think about it that way and so we're talking about real numbers we're not talking about imaginary numbers even though we know that polynomial functions have solutions that are uh, imaginary numbers that's not the question here the question is uh, um, what numbers can I plug into this function? And we're considering real numbers. We're talking about real numbers, okay? And so for an even root, a negative number for us generates an imaginary number. If I plug in a negative number into an even root, I get an imaginary number. If it's square root, if it's fourth root, we haven't even spoken about this, but what would this be? Like fourth root of negative 16, we just say no real solutions, okay? Um, and it's something, but it's not real. So we're considering it not to be a real solution. So therefore, a negative number in an even root, we say, has no solution. Okay, negative number in an even root, remember this index is 2, that has no solution. So 
for us that mean but but uh, I can do things like this the square root of 0 I can do the square root of 4 I can do the square root of you know 100 something like that so 0 is just 0 this would be 2 this would be 10 so these are fine um, the only problems that create an, a number sorry the only numbers that create a problem for me when I'm um, you know substituting them into an even root are negative numbers likewise fourth root of 0 or fourth root of 16 or fourth root of some huge thing I don't know 10,000 or something all of these have, have real solutions real answers this is just 0 this is just 2 this would be whatever okay as long as the number is positive some big positive number so <clears throat> uh, that's fine so for even roots, just think I can't plug in negative x values into an even root because that gives me an imaginary number or something I don't even understand what it is, like this. Um, and so that's what you have to consider when talking about domain of power functions, okay, power functions. So what we're saying is that I can't have this expression here be negative. If that becomes negative, then I can't take the fourth root of it. And so that creates a problem. So what we have to say is that expression, everything inside the root has to be greater or equal to zero. So this is what we're busy saying. 2x plus 7 has to be greater or equal to zero. It can be zero because I can take the fourth root of zero. That's fine. Okay. Uh, and it can be greater than zero because then it would be a positive number. So that's okay. Um, so how do I simplify this and then write the domain using interval notation? You just solve it for x. So you say 2x is greater or equal to negative 7. And if you divide by 2, you get x is greater or equals to negative 7 over 2. <clears throat> and so we're saying as long as x is greater or equals to negative 7 over 2, when I plug that number in there for x, the fourth root will work. I'll get either zero or a bigger number. So the fourth root will work. In other words, there is a fourth root. In other words, there's a real solution. Okay? And so all we have to do now is we said this is not um, sufficient anymore for algebra two. You have to write interval notation. And so interval notation said uh, I start at negative seven over two, comma, I go all the way up to greater or equals to negative 7 over 2, the biggest number I can think of, which is infinity. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we write, um, you know, we have to put the parentheses or brackets around this. So we call them open parentheses, closed bracket, something like that. So because this has an equal sign here, it means that x can be negative 7 over 2. So if x can be a number, we call that a closed bracket, or a bracket or closed, okay? And then uh, infinity always has an open parenthesis. So just remember, if I have something like this, greater than zero, then I would have to write open parenthesis zero to positive infinity, because there's no equal sign down here. So x cannot be zero, and this is how we say x cannot be zero. It's just greater than zero. Everything just greater than zero. All right, so that's uh, the first one. Uh, let me do the other ones a little bit quicker. Hopefully it's not too bad for you uh, right now. So let's do uh, the next composition, g of f of x. So g of f of x. So we do that composition. This works the other way around. The outside function is g, and I'm supposed to substitute f into it. So let me erase this. And so what I'm doing here is I'm saying take g. Here's g. Okay, write it down, but don't write the x. Just leave a big space for where I'm going to substitute the f in there. Okay, and the function f here needs to be substituted in here. Of course, that's f of x, and that's there. And so let me do that in a different color. If I substitute f of x in there, I get 2x to the 1 fourth. Okay, so g is like the outer shell, and then I'm saying take f and substitute it into g. All right, so that's what happened. Um, and then um, we can simplify this. Of course, you want to simplify it. So I get uh, now. Here, I am allowed to multiply 2 and 2, 
because only the x has a one-fourth power, the two does not have a one-fourth power. So I'm allowed to uh, multiply the two and the two. So I get four x to the one-fourth plus seven. And again, my suggestion to you would be convert this to a radical form so that you understand what it is you're looking at. And so what we're looking at is uh, the four times the fourth root of x plus seven. And again, uh, the general rule still holds here. Uh, the thing that's inside the root cannot be negative. It must be zero or positive. So we're just basically saying x must be greater or equals to zero. Okay, so uh, again, when we're asking about domain, we're talking about which values can x be? Which values are is x allowed to take on? Or which values of x are in the domain of the function? Okay, in this case, the composition of the functions. And so again, that's that. And we're saying x can be zero, so interval notation is x can't be zero. It's a closed bracket, and then goes on forever to infinity this way. You can also think about this as a number line, right? So uh, if I'm making a number line, x goes this way forever, but x starts at zero. Okay, so if I put zero here, x can start at zero, and zero is included because the equal sign means color the dot in, and x goes this way forever. So that number line understanding is exactly what uh, this interval notation shows us. But the answer we want you to write down is not this. You can write down as part of your work, but we want to see this as the answer for domain. So you would write the domain is that. Okay. All right. So that's that. All right, let's do the next composition. This is a bit of a tricky one because some of the math is a little bit harder and also because it feels weird uh, composing a function with itself somehow feels strange okay so this says do the composition f of f of x and so what that means is take this function and substitute it into itself that feels strange not too bad so you do this you say, write it down, just like we have been. Write down f, so the outer shell here is f. So I just write down 2, and I leave a space, and I write down power to the fourth. Okay? All right, so that's fine. And then it says, uh, substitute it into itself. So what does that work like? So let me do a different color here. So what you're doing is saying, take this now and plug it into itself. Plug f into itself. Okay, so then what you get there is um, you get 2x to the fourth, right? So how does that simplify? So let's see. I can't distribute the 2 in here because there's a fourth power that has to be taken care of first. So I don't do that. I just leave it on the outside two times. And then I want to use the power of a product rule for exponents and I say this becomes 2 to the 1 fourth times this becomes x to the 1 fourth times 1 fourth well 1 fourth times 1 fourth is just 1 over 16 so 1 16th okay and now I can actually multiply these two 2 and 2 to the 4 to 1 fourth this is 2 to the first power so I have 1 plus 1 fourth for the powers, because that's, uh, if you multiply like basis, you add the exponents, so 1 plus 1 fourth, that's just 5 fourths, all right? So what I have here is 2 to the 5 fourths times x to the 1 sixteenth, okay? And so I would again suggest write this as, um, you know, radical form. This is the fourth root of 2 to the fifth times, uh, sorry, the fourth root, uh, sorry, not the fourth root, the 16th root, the 16th root of x, okay, to the first power, but that's just x. Now you can, if you want to simplify this a little bit more, it's not going to change the domain question, but it, it's at least a little bit simpler. It's okay. I think this is fine to stop here, but... If you really want to, you can say 5 can divide by 4, or there's a 2 to the 4th in 2 to the 5th. So I can say one of the 2's come out, but uh, there's a remainder of 1. So I have this times, 
the 16th root of x. Of course, x can't come out of the 16th root. So that's that. So this is about as simple as you can get it. We don't really write the ones, but that's about as simple as you can get it. Okay. And sorry, this is a fourth root. Don't forget the fourth root. So that's the answer to the composition question. And now we still have to answer the domain question. Well, fortunately, the domain question here is also easy. I mean, these are just numbers. Fourth root of two is just a number. Nothing I have to worry about there. But I need to say that since this is an even root, whatever goes in there must be greater or equal to zero. So x must be greater or equal to zero. And if you write that in, in um, interval notation, again, you're using a square bracket or a closed bracket to say x can be zero and then x goes to infinity. And we use open parenthesis for um, infinity always. Okay, so that's example three.